Yo, what up? This is the Skycast talking about operation. Today on the program, I'm talking to D-Ray, who's a trombonist and keyboard player for Bad Operation. Also joined by Dominic Minix, lead vocalist, lyricist, guitar player for Bad Op, Robert on drums, and Greg on bass. Shout out to Brian, lead guitar player. We miss you, homie. Bad Op is chilling with me today, talking about a variety of things, including their history and music, what they hope to communicate clearly, and their upcoming self-titled debut album out December 18th. Let's go ahead and jump into this conversation with the boys themselves. Bad operation from New Orleans, Louisiana. Peace. This is the Skycast. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you guys for being here, man. All good. Yeah, thank you for asking us to do this. This is sick. <laughs> for sure, man. I mean, I had to, bro. You know, bad operation. Unsubscribe, bad motivation in my mind. You know, I'm, I'm stoked on the album, man. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, it's all good. Yeah, like, yeah, we are kind of, like, all pretty floored uh, at how it's how it's been going. You guys uh, have all played in ska bands before, right? I'm the only one who hasn't played in a ska band before. Me. Dominic. I've got a solo project. I'm from New Orleans. I study with a lot of jazz musicians, and jazz is kind of like my first love. And I right. um, played with a bunch of other artists like Solange and Christian Scott. Mm. And uh, I had my own band for a while called Young Cole, and that was like punk rock meets hip hop meets jazz. But when I was in high school, I had always gone to the community records, um, all ages shows. It was a very formative experience for me, and uh, it really inspired me to bring punk into my music. And um, uh, Greg hit me up recently to be in bad operation and that's kind of how i got started here yeah so i'm rob uh i play drums on on the record um yeah i was like 14 years old skateboarding at a library in new orleans and greg was a senior in high school and you know i was like playing sports before and i kind of stopped playing sports at the start of high school and i didn't really have anybody to talk to and then greg just gave me a flyer for a ska show it's like 2004 2003 and yeah. i was like yeah, I guess I'll go. <laughs> yeah. And then I went and like it like changed my life. And then I joined a band or then I started a band just so I could play with Greg's band. Right. Because I wanted to like, I was like, oh, yeah, I, we're going to do this now. Yeah. Uh, and then we were kind of two bands in the scene for a little while. Uh, I was in the ska band called Angry Banana. And like in the post Katrina New Orleans world, ska music was like one of the only things to kind of do as a teenage kid. So like, we just kept the scene alive through wanting to hang out and like do stuff together. Uh, so yeah, I started doing a bunch of other bands and you know, we, we were all like taking our bands like really seriously and like trying to do the whole fucking thing. And you know, we did some cool stuff, but it amounted to just kind of more, you know, self, you know, uh, it, it was really just fueling our own desires as opposed to getting any kind of real footing in anything. And then Greg was like, I'm going to start another ska band and you're, I want you to play drums. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, that sounds fun. It was all about fun. It's kind of, it was just what it was supposed to be about. It was just supposed to be about having fun. And we didn't think that it would get any kind of, we didn't think that anybody would really care about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> gotcha. You, uh, you, you, you also play drums in, uh, in all people, right? Most of you guys play in all people, right? Yeah, the three, uh, three of us do, uh, Greg, D-Ray, and me. Oh yeah. Yeah, I started playing, you know, I started, I was classically trained on piano first, and then I started playing trombone, uh, like, when band starts in, like, fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, like, almost didn't start playing trombone. I wanted to play drums and sax, and I didn't make the cut for either of those. So, <laughs> and then they had a, like, opening on trombone. So, ended up doing that, which I'm super happy that I ended up doing that, because... I went to college for it, so that worked out. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, Greg and I met, like, started playing in ska when I was in high school in a, in Slidell, 
and met Greg through like playing shows. He was in Fat of an Albert. I was in another band, Samurai Deli. We started touring together. I eventually joined Fat of an Albert. And Community Records started in 2007, 2008. And that was when we really teamed up. You yeah. Know, I think that that was kind of when it was like a solid, like, all right, like anything we work on is going to be the two of us pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I play, we played together in Fat of an Albert. I played in Flaming Tsunamis, did All People. You guys have pretty much been jamming together since you guys started uh, jamming together in Fat of an Albert, basically. Yeah, yeah, we've been, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a dynamic it's, duo, <laughs> great team for many 12, years. 12 plus years. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, Fat Op was supposed to, was supposed to be, is, <laughs> like, <laughs> so much fun. And like, like. It's the it's the funniest thing to to have. I was telling Rob this the other day, like to work so hard on music for so many years, and then to take a step back and listen to our hearts and do what was super fun and like just lead with our guts, have fun, and to have people uh, sort of grabbing onto it and it meaning a lot to people, kind of a lot like it means to us, is pretty profound and really cool to see. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I would I would definitely echo a lot of what the three of them have said in terms of, you know, this this project, I think in a lot of ways caught us all by surprise. Mm-hmm. But then and while we're looking at it while it's happening, like you can do the math and be like, oh, yeah, like shit. Yeah, we were like kind of laying the groundwork for this for a really long time, but we didn't really see it leading up to the moment. And like now that it's happening, it's just kind of has us all pretty floored and very excited and on a personal level I feel I mean not just elated but also validated in terms of oh shit like did stuff for the ska scene and the indie scene and the punk scene and the all the scenes that we've been a part of for years and then and then it's cool that this is resonating with people and not only that like we're having a great time (laughs) like this is it's just kind of it, like the, all the, I, I mean, yeah, the record is so, we're so proud of it. So proud yeah. of it. Or, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting you say that about laying the groundwork because uh, before I, I had like looked into your guys' story, um, I didn't know that you, like some of you guys played in Fat and Albert. And so like back in the day when like MP3 players were a thing, I used to have like a Fat and Albert album burned on like an iPod classic. I think it was called The Last Minute or something like that. And yeah. uh yeah, I remember. I remember. I, um, there was a song on there called "Panda King," right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely remember Fat and Out for sure. Um, I know. Uh, I know that for for I think in 2013, even because I, I didn't even know that you guys founded uh, Community Records, but I, I had been following Community Records on my personal Instagram since like 2013. That's what's up. For like a while ago. So like when when I looked into that and I saw like the, the logo, I was like, oh dude, I, I, I definitely like recognize that, you know, cause I, I, I've always been following it. So I've always seen like the post and all that, you know? Yeah. And I'm glad it, it's still, you know, yeah. Like I said, or like we said, it's kind of all the years of us kind of putting in some sweat equity and then having it turn into something that's just been resonating with people feels really great. You know, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad we, you know, we're thrilled that you like it. Um, to me, I learned so much about Greg in this experience. Okay. Uh, Greg is a he's a real student of this music, you know, mm-hmm. of ska music, and D-Ray as well. Um, but we sat down together one time, and he pulled out all these shows that he had done since like two thousand, early two thousands. And uh, I remember having conversations with Greg where, it's like, you know, I mean, I'm talking about laying the foundation. Like, um, I think we had all like at the point we had reached a point where we had all collectively experienced all the like all all of what happens when you're dedi- when you're dedicated to music. Yeah. You know, the burnout, um, the love, the achievement, try what all that shit. You know, and so I think like we reached a point where we just had to do something that. It was simple and small. You know. Of course. He would tell me about how many, you know, how much work he would put in, like the indie scene where his and his heart was really in ska music. And uh, well, D Ray and I in the same boat. That's you know, uh, that's also like. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off. Talk about that. I, I was thinking. I wanted to speak like what you were saying about like. I was thinking about this today about a question on another interview about like all of your back different backgrounds like what do you, how did you all come together to gel together and one of the things that I think you touched on just now that got all of us working well together is that we have experienced all these like 
highs and lows and like of just being involved in music for so long and to come together at a very specific time like it was a specific thought like we were talking like let's start a ska band <laughs> like let's start a ska band have a lot of fun but beyond that it was also like this very specific un really uh talked about moment i think in a lot of our lives to come together at that specific moment where we were kind of like unspokenly had been through a lot of the same things or feeling the same thing burnout not knowing what to do loving music don't know where to turn or like how it's going to commit or like uh whatever yeah and i don't know if we i didn't feel like this is what's going to fix it <laughs> but holy shit it definitely like flipped around my like mental space and like feelings about music like I feel I feel refreshed as if I'm like I'm 16 again you know and I feel really good and driven and yeah yeah no that's cool yeah, yeah. yeah some guy came up to D-Ray and said man that operation gives me hope <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like it's bigger than us <laughs> now yeah or, yeah, we were, you know, FTA was definitely, I mean, not just FTA, Angry Banana, Samurai Deli, like uh, Brian, who's a guitar player, is not here. He played in a band called Citizen Dread, and then the Lollies, like, you know, and and Dominic has been, I guess, I mean, you're, what, five? I'm, I'm 34, you're... I'm 26. 26, so, like, you know, we, we were, like, in each other's orbits. Yeah, I started as a fan, and then eventually graduated to start playing gigs with these guys and, well and you say grab but like you went on and like you're the most talent i you are the most talented musician in the band as far as <laughs> like i mean i mean i mean like you got chops and like Thanks. so it's like we hustling in the punk scene and then it kick flips into this kind of thing where we all join together to do something just for fun like i mean we really we literally started this band to play a show yeah like it was literally like Let's play a show before mm -hmm. Brian goes on tour with Pears. Yeah. And we were like, okay, well, Brian could record us because he has recording capabilities. And so we're like, well, why don't we just track the songs that we write? And then maybe we'll put out an EP, play a show, and then literally never do anything ever again. <laughs> and that was and that was before quarantine. Then we flipped the script. And then yeah, we kind of it, it 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 a lot of a lot of things kind of just marinated in a very interesting way to allow for us to kind of take our time with this album, the focus on the recorded element of it, to think about how we wanted to present it as like a band, like what 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 is that operation about, and how do we want to get these songs out there? And I think all of our collective experience, not just in the ska scene but in music in general, allowed us to kind of be very intentional about not just the music but how it looks how it feels like the style like you know if you might go through and read the thing that we did with brooklyn vegan like you know we're all just having a good time but it is very intentional like it's like like the, like like the, it's serious, it's serious fun. Fun. It's like, like you know we definitely are like no like if we're gonna do it let's do it right and it's been it's been great like it's sick to see that people are responding to it yeah most definitely i mean uh you know one thing that that, that i like about you guys too is uh um it seems like you guys also like uh understand the importance of like you know coming out and being ready with like with actual content along with the songs because perilous believe it dropped like what like october 12th around there yeah yeah. yeah and and it you know it wasn't just a song it was a whole music video you know which that 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 makes a huge difference you know what i'm saying yeah and i mean a lot of that is the i mean it's all of our work but the work that d-ray and i have done with the label like we've released well over a hundred albums on mm -hmm. the label and so we kind of have seen like what works what doesn't work when it comes to announcing a project or a band or an idea and you know sky is in d-ray and i's wheelhouse <laughs> you know i mean it's all in our wheelhouse but like you know, we know how to market and talk about and think about a ska band. Word. It's yeah. fun. It's fucking fun. <laughs> you know, we're having yeah. a great time. Yeah, and I think, um, like, I think a, a lot of our old music, we all always wanted to, like, do new and exciting acrobatic things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've got to let go of that in the music and put that more in the, into the presentation of how we're doing things. And, uh, like, Greg came... He, he, his initial idea for the music video was to just do a few 30 second clips for Instagram. But everybody in the band was like, yo, let's actually do a shit ton of music videos, you know? Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that was like a lot of willingness and, um, but still in the vein of serious fun.